Hello everybody, my name is Michael Araki. I'm from Brazil. I live in a city called Niterói, Rio de Janeiro, and I'm a polymath. In fact, I'm developing a whole new theory on polymathy, a theory that is very comprehensive, very thorough, bringing the state-of-the-art theories of other authors, of other scientists, to integrate into a model that encompasses from the biological level, passing through the psychological level, and the social and economical aspects. I started this channel to tell a little bit of my story, the story of modern polymath, a person who has a lot of interests, abilities, and has acquired somewhat profound knowledge in many domains, and all these struggles, the hurdles, and the upsides of being a person like that, and trying to develop a theory at the state of the art in, uh, in a field that does, doesn't really exist. We still don't have a field of, of uh, polymathy studies. It's something that I'm trying to bring to existence. Recently, I gave an interview to a large European newspaper to talk about polymathy and the 500 years of Leonardo da Vinci's death. And the first question that everybody makes is, how does one become a polymath? And following that, what are the advantages and disadvantages of polymathy? How can polymaths contribute to organizations and societies? And many other questions like that. Well, in this channel, I will try to bring all those answers to life and try to show how the real life of a polymath actually is. So this channel will bring uh, some of my everyday hurdles, the problems and the things that I'm doing to try to achieve this goal, to become an eminent researcher or an eminent scientist, in fact, in more than one area, which is what polymathy is all about. I will intercalate these personal episodes with some material on how polymathy works, is structured, some material that I also bring to my lectures. I'm a professor in Brazil and I'm doing also a PhD in a completely different domain, domain in finance, and I try to integrate them as best as I can, and here I will tell you how I can do that. For this first video, I'll tell the story of how I discovered the term polymathy. It was in 2011, I was 28 years old, and since a young age, I have felt this desire of knowing many things, and I have felt this anxiety of not fitting in in any pre-established role. Besides that, I never really bought the conventional wisdom of almost everything. I have several problems. In, uh, with formal education. I didn't like how the school taught the subjects and how it was completely schizophrenic, disconnected from reality. However, I always liked knowledge itself. So it was common for me to skip classes, to go to the library at, that uh, my school had, uh, not very big library. After all, it's Brazil, not a, not a country with a lot of resources, but they indeed have good books there. Had. And one of the books that I read when I was 15 was Brave New World from Aldous Huxley. And after that, I discovered a, a whole new world of uh, real knowledge that I could drink from its source instead of uh, being just exposed to lectures by my teachers. Well, uh, years of course have passed. I was an adult. I had a, 
a, a, a career, some occupation in the business field that was starting in the business field. And then I read this book by Carl Sagan, Dragons of Eden. And then in this book, it, it's from the 70s, by the way. In this book, he talks about many things, many interesting things about the different brain systems, the limbic brain, the reptilian brain, the neocortex. And he talks about society in general and the, the challenges that we face and how people have different opportunities to become polymaths or not, depending on their environment. So I was very intrigued by the word, and he specifically talked about great polymaths that existed in the Renaissance, of course, and Great Britain in a later period. And uh, he showed how polymaths are especially good to tackle difficult, complex problems problems that require some kind of thinking that must go beyond, go across the disciplinary boundaries. And I was fascinated with that. It really resonated with me. And I thought, well, I finally have a word to describe myself. One of the biggest problems of polymathic people is that Society compels us to conform to a given role, a role of a specialist in something. And for those people who can't conform to that, who think that life is bigger, larger than that, they face a large array of difficulties. It's hard to convey your personality. It's hard to convey your worldview, your dreams. And this word could convey so many things at once. And since then, I have done a lot, a lot, a lot of research on that term polymathy until I became a leading expert on it. And I give interviews. I will next month be on the uh, Southern Oregon Creative Conference, Creativity Conference, to talk about the theme. Uh, in the following month, I will be in Chicago to talk about polymathy at the APA, American Psychological Association annual meeting, leading a panel on the theme as well. And, well, polymathy, in my view, is more than the acquisition of knowledge in many domains. Polymathy entails, in my understanding, a whole worldview, a way, a philosophy of life, which embeds this desire to know more, but not knowledge per se, knowledge to make a difference, to be creative. And being creative means being able to create something novel that has never existed before and something that's useful, that's adaptive, that can bring joy, that can bring value to other people. That's the definition of creativity. And for me, polymathy and creativity are intimately linked. One cannot generate new things if the person only has the same pieces of knowledge as everybody else in the same field. So the range of combinations are limited. Polymathic people bring raw materials from everywhere. So physicist that is a polymath can bring some experience from music to inform his thinking or her thinking in physics. In fact, that's precisely what Einstein did. Although he's not so well known as a polymath, his thinking was informed by his experience and early exposure to music, something that he loved and something that he told many times that he would be a musician if he wouldn't be a physicist. Well, and I think that sharing this path or how I've been walking on my path can help many people that have 
a similar worldview. Some people that want, that know that life is fleeting, life is only one, and that you have one chance to acquire as much substance in life as possible. And the word substance is very important because some, some people think only about breadth, about range alone. But range or breadth alone can be superficial. And superficiality is something that it doesn't fulfill at least the person who is a knowledge lover. A person is only fulfilled if this breadth and range is accompanied by a profound understanding. It's so good to understand something very profoundly so you can have uh, really an informed idea of how that part of the world works. And understanding how one part of the world works really help us understand many other aspects of life. And that's the way of life of a polymath. Trying new things, discovering and delving into the discoveries. That's something a little bit difficult for many people and I will try to bring some strategies to help with that. And finally, trying to integrate all those experiences, exposures that are unique to you to form new ideas and to build a personality that is fuller, that is more synergistic with different activities, not competing with each other, but adding and combining to generate something new. And lastly, that would be good, that would be an incredible world if everybody could generate products from that, products that enhance our experience of what being a conscious human in the 21st century is with beautiful, novel, creative, useful, and, uh, uh, and the sometimes surprising products for our and everybody's benefit. So, stick with me if you're interested in polymathy, in developing yourself, and having a broad and profound and integrated uh, philosophy of life. I'm Michael Araki. Bye-bye.